Okay, so this here is part two of the video uh, as it pertains to technique types of airbrushes and stuff like that. We're still going to jump back into it. Uh, we ended on dagger strokes. Dagger strokes are not done with your wrist. Okay? Dagger strokes are best done with your shoulder. Watch my shoulder. Watch my wrist. You don't see my wrist bending. Even though I can do that. With you guys just starting out. If you get that technique down, you're fine. And in the class that I have, I show you guys how to initially start with dots. Boom. This is control. This is why I'm able to airbrush at a high pressure because I'm able to identify the airbrush right away. All of these airbrushes here, they're going to be working differently. But here is a easier way. Let me see if I can get this back in off of it. Okay. This is, I could tell that this spring here that's pushing the trigger forward was really, really tight. And that's going to make your finger fatigued. And it's going to throw off your trigger finger. So turn it all the way back at least one full turn. And that's going to take some of the pressure off of you having to pull the trigger uh, over a period of time and it's going to make it a whole lot easier for you. Let me, uh, I might have to put some more paint. Okay. So I'll put some more paint in it. We'll just jump to this one. Now here's a side feed, uh, Ayawada. And it is, it's great. I really like this too, but still, in order to get that control, you make sure that you do dots. Do a hundred of them a day if you have to. But then when you come back from that, take those dots and build right off of them. Clean your, uh, your needle and try dagger strokes. Right off of all those dots that you just did. And remember, I always tell all my students that I've been airbrushing for 20 years. You've been airbrushing for 20 minutes. Okay? I don't expect you to be as fluent. But once you get the technique down, you're fine. Also, this here is called a shadow box. Okay? My goal is to get this here. See that light shadowed area? And start here. This is going to help you with portraits and making things look look real. So I'm going to get have that gradual change in color without lines. Without lines. So I'm going to go ahead and get a little darker. I'm building on this. Staying within my box as much as I can. And we want to do that without having a true line. And that right there is going to help you with control. This here is wrong. If you do, if you're doing this, and you're seeing dots here, that's letting me know you're not letting that trigger go. If I'm seeing dots here, that's letting me know you're too close. And you're not feather dusting. Okay? Now, of course, you can go back in and darken things as much as you need it. And then fix it. But it's going to take you some time to do that. Okay? And that's with anything. So let's go ahead and get back to this soccer ball and answer some more questions. Uh, I just came in here and blew that in. You see that spider web right there? I'm okay with that. I don't, that right there is not going to scare me. So I'm going to get back into it. Go here. Go here. Boom. See how easy you can clean that up? Don't let those spider whips uh, freak you out. Also, writing. Uh, 
quick writing, we're just going to put uh, my mom's name. We'll go here. All right. Now that's going to take you some time. Remember, 20 minutes, 20 years. Okay. Of course, you can go back into it. Thick and thin it. Or you can learn how to do it with one pass. Okay. Now, a little drop shadow. Drop shadow should not take over your design. Okay? It should be light. Sometimes I see people with drop shadows that's just as dark as the writing. You don't want that. This right here, not good. Just lightly do it. And look, it's no rhyme. It's just following the little humps. It just looks like there's a drop shadow. I didn't trace each letter. I just went underneath it lightly. All right. So I don't really like to have a video last more than five minutes. So um, hopefully I answered a lot of questions. If not, keep plugging away, asking me, hey, uh, Greg, can you show me this? What's going on with that? The air pressure, guys, I'm telling you, it's going to be feel, your feel. There is no concrete air pressure uh, that you are going to work with, okay? You're always going to play with it. Remember, you can play with it using a, re uh, a uh, regulator on the hose or at your compressor, okay? Uh, paint uh, and reducing the paint. Remember, it's going to be a feel. Take time out. Even if it's a week, all you focus on is reducing paint. Do that. Then you're going to come to a, a point where, hey, I like the paint this way when you're doing different surfaces. Reduce the paint more when you're doing metal and hard surfaces, okay? If it's thick, I'm telling you, you're gonna have a problem. Let me see here, I think this is it right here. You're doing a motorcycle and your paint is that thick right here. When you go to clear coat that, it's gonna be a headache. It's gonna look like you got sand on it, okay? What you want is this here. See how translucent that looks? That's what you want, okay? Because then you can draw and lay out everything. And when your paint is mixed even better, look at that. It slowly build on it. Now this is a mirror, glass, okay? So you're gonna have that, but look at, I'm not, air, I'm not putting any paint out. I'm letting the paint dry. And then I'm coming back. Let the paint dry, then I'm coming back. Let the paint dry, then I'm coming back. If you have to come back away to keep it from separating like that, do that. Okay? So, uh, it's just going to be one of those things where, hey, I don't have all the answers for your specific project, but I'll try to get close. Talk to you soon.